Hi everybody and welcome to our Sunday afternoon, morning, evening, wherever you are live. Uh, we're carrying on where we left off yesterday really with this beautiful, beautiful file folder that we're going to make into a journal. And um, I did promise you and I stand by that, that everything that I do in it, I will show you in a live. Mr Fixit got it slightly wrong and thought that I was actually going to show you everything today, that I was going to finish it today. Um, that's not the case unless you want to stay with me for about 12 hours. Um, but we'll make some progress today and then I'll join you again, uh, hopefully in the middle of the week and we'll carry on with it and uh, get cracking. Just before I do start, I just want to say some thank yous to people. Uh, well, thank you to everybody who's subscribed to the channel. Uh, it, it means a lot to me. Um, and to the new people, welcome along. I hope that you find something that you like and that you can feel at home here. And to the subscribers that have stood by me from the beginning, thank you so much for your loyalty. Um, more specific thank yous. And these are not definitive. They're just some people out of many that have helped. Um, I just wanted to say thank you to Roz, to Donna, to Hilda, to Lynn, La Jean, Shaz, Deborah, Jen, Desiree and Nancy. Thank you so much for your help. It's, um, well, it means, it means the difference between us being able to do this and not, quite frankly. So uh, your continued help goes a long way supports our channel it provides hopefully tuition for people for free and that is what our intention always was so thank you guys uh, and and thank you the, the rest of you that i haven't mentioned i know there are more okay so let's get back to the point of today's live it's this beautiful file folder that lynn sent me in a pack um i was a bit loath to use it but as as the journal's going together, I, I like it. So, you know, it's it hasn't died in vain. Uh, and these are the papers that we put together yesterday. They're from My Porch Prints called Shabby Purple. Uh, and they're beautiful, lovely papers. And we've used every single one. There's 12 in the pack. We've printed out six papers back and front. So we've used every design that there is in that pack. Uh, this is the, the one that I haven't touched at all. We've just gone through and selected the papers that we wanted in it and where we wanted them. Uh, this one, however, I have been doing bits too, uh, just to try and get you something to look at. I, I've decided not to zigzag around the edge of the design papers. Uh, I just like the look of them plain like that. However, the wildflower one, we folded a bit in and I've zigzagged around the entire, the entire page. And I've put in a couple of journaling cards in that uh, pocket that we created by folding the page over. So these were um, ephemera from the lilac and lavender ephemera pack from my porch prints and you get loads loads and loads i printed these out on a3 which i think is called tabloid paper in the us um so that the the kind of giant cards <laughs> if you print them out as normal on a4 you know they're just a nice size to use but because this whole journal is uh, a3 size i've printed these out large as well and i've sewn around them i've sewn that one just um straight stitch around the edge and uh, this one zigzag around the edge just as a point of difference and then on the back I've just stenciled uh, I've got a little this stencil this row stencil uh, and it's so blinking handy really um, so I've just used parts of it and I, I think by doing that by backing them onto the coffee stained paper and by just adding those little bits which takes seconds it just elevates them. It just says to people that you cared about what you were doing enough to take the time to do that. Uh, and, that, you know, if I was receiving a journal, I'd like to think that somebody spent time caring about how I was going to feel about it. So they pop into there. So there's good journaling there. And then on here, I've put a belly band, or as we call it in this group, a tummy tuck. So we don't say belly because it's... Crass, it's a crass word. 
<laughs> oh dear. Uh, and for that, I've used some of that card that I got out of my box um, from the paper mill. And it's actually, it's pearlescent card. I don't really need to use pearlescent card, but it was on the top of the pile, so I used it. Let's do a roll call. Shimri. Hi, Shimri. Hilda. Hello, Hilda. I can't believe you made it back to watch me. Seems you've been scouting around the country all day. Deborah. Hello, Deborah. Roz. Hiya, Roz. Pat. Hiya, Pat. Welcome along. Jan-Anne. Hello, Janet. Kerry Roberts. Hi, Kerry. Uh, Helen Adams. Hi, Helen. Jen. Hiya, Jen. Flo. Hello, Flo. I see you being yourself today. <laughs> Nathanja. Hi, Nathania. And um, Hilda Rose. Rose, did I say Rose already? Yeah. yeah. Jean. Yeah. Um, Hi, Jean. You like the big cards, I know. Leslie M. Hi, Leslie. How are you doing? I think that's everybody. Shout okay. Out if I missed you. Yeah, shout out if we missed you. That will never do. Who's that at the bottom? Oh, it's a it's a new subscriber it's a new, to us. So it's not come up. Oh, it's just come up now. Yeah, uh, Hina. Hina, who is a go away, who is a, a new subscriber to us, guys, uh, and new on our group. So make a welcome. Um, we're glad, we're pleased to have her along. So yeah, this uh, tummy tuck here. Now I'm going to show you what I did, and we'll put it in the other um, journal. You know, the other part of this journal. And what I want to put in there when it's when we've done the other one is an envelope. And I'm going to show you how we're going to put that together. Uh, is that all I've done? Oh, no, I've put some other little bits ready to go. Uh, this was an envelope that came with ooh, a folio. I think I bought it from my porch prints some time ago. But this is the beauty of digital prints. Once you've got them on your computer, you've got them forever. And if you think you won't have them forever, if you feel like your computer might at any stage ever in the future crash, conk out, break down, whatever, please put your files that you've paid for, your digital downloads, onto a stick so as you've always got them. Because if you're anything like me, you'll have quite a few pounds worth or dollars worth of um, downloads and you don't want to use them and have to start again buying them all uh, to lose them I mean and buy them all again so put them on a stick where you've got them safely uh, and you'll have them forever so this uh, was an envelope um, <laughs> it folds a bit better than that um, that I got from a folio kit from my porch prints but I've used it as a template because now I've got this envelope I've got the shape of it so I've got the template for that uh, and that's going to be the corner piece that holds that in. Here's our music sheet and uh, I'm going to do a bit of decoupage on there. And I think that's as far as I've got. Yeah. So if we go as far as that today, I think we'll be doing quite well. Let's start with a tummy tuck anyway. Pat says she's going to ask the butcher for tummy pork. Tummy, yeah. <laughs> tummy pork. <laughs> now I can manage to say that somehow, Pat. So this is our wildflower page and we folded it in and what I didn't do on the last one and what I should have done was I didn't zigzag down the front here before I went round it. So bear that in mind. Um, you'll see on this one I, I, I just forgot. In fact, only just as we came on did I realise that I hadn't zigzagged down there. Um, I mean, it, it's, it's OK, it's acceptable, but really it should have been zigzagged down there. So remember, if you are stitching around your journal, and there's no need to, you, you don't have to, but if you are, zigzag down there first. Donna's joined us. Hi, Donna. Welcome along. In, you miss... In, Inna says she loves purple and she loves this kit. Ah, yeah, no, it's lovely. Um, that just needs a bit of careful folding. It's not quite square, that. Um, who Who's just come on? Deborah. Donna. Donna. Donna, Donna. Ah, oh, right. Welcome, Donna. Sorry, I'm getting confused with the Ds. It's all the Ds. Right, let's do this uh, tummy tuck. So, I took a piece of this. This is how it came from uh, the paper mill shop. So, I've cut it down to the two and a half inches it is, and it is the exact same length as the book page. 
So it's exactly that length. Yeah, I'll go with that. That's exactly right. And it's two and a half inches wide, which I think is, is, a, is a nice width. If you want it less, I can understand. Um, but for a book this size, I thought two and a half inches was, was fine. And what I then did was took a bit of our um, Wildflowers of the World book and cut out a piece that's quarter of an inch all the way around less than that. So be two inches, won't it? Two inches wide and just quarter of an inch top and bottom less. And I've sewn round there with just a straight stitch just to, just so it looks finished, you know, you know what I'm like. So I'm just going to stick that down onto there. It's like an explosion in a purple factory in here. Um, and I'm just going to use my ordinary Aileen's white tacky glue. It's fine for paper. I really like this kit, this shabby purple. They also do a shabby green and a shabby blue, I think. <laughs> See where I'm going, can't you? I've got file folders <laughs> in different colours. But no, I won't. I'll try something very different for the next file folder that we do. So just stick that onto there, as I say, a quarter of an inch up from the bottom, a quarter of an inch in from each end, each side, and stick that down. That looks about right. I did ink round this first as well um, with that ink that I showed you yesterday, which is called shaded lilac i'm not so certain it's the exact right color to be honest i could do with something more purpley than lilac -y, but i haven't got anything so um this is what we've got in this says there's also a new shabby purple ephemera kit oh is that that must be quite new then because i didn't see that and jean asked if you so on every page uh, so i put not on every page but certainly in every journal yeah and donna wants to know why didn't you sew those two pieces together? Is there a reason? Uh, no, except that I was just giving my sewing machine a bit of a holiday, really. Um, this card is 300 GSM, this purple card. And my sewing machine never usually complains. But when you add the 300 GSM to the paper of the book, it's quite thick. And it didn't have to be done. You know, I can just sew around there and then stick it on. Um the other thing is that it's easier to get it accurate when you're using the edge of the paper to guide you. Um, yeah, that's about it, really. I just it, It's just easier for me and my sewing machine is basically the answer to that. But no, I mean, you, you don't have to sew it, for one thing. You can sew it all together, as, as Donna says, no problem. Um, if you were using something thinner, this is just, it's just a little bit thick for my liking to go on the machine. Now then, on the one that we've already done, I used this lace here, which is nice, it's delicate. But when I met Hilda, she gave me some beautiful lace. And this is a part of one of the pieces that she gave me. And I just think that is so, so pretty. Um, and so I'm going to use that on there because it, it'll stand out. You'll see it, you know. I don't want to use this somewhere where it's just not going to be noticed. So for this part, I'm going to use Fabri-Tac because of the lace being fabric. <laughs> so I'm just going to put a bead along there. And actually, when you're attaching lace, you need rather more glue than you think you might because the lace itself kind of absorbs the glue and then there's nothing left to stick it. So make sure that you put... You know, not loads, but plenty. It's a technical measurement. It's a technical measurement, yes. Not loads, but plenty. And then take a, a, a point on your lace where you can see through so you know that you're sticking it straight down the, the card so you, you won't have it uneven. Something that you can see through So for me, it was the edge of this here, and I've stuck that down onto there. 
It doesn't take long for a protect to dry. So doesn't that look pretty? That is such a pretty lace. Oh, dog, dog seen something outside that interests her. There we are. So that's one side, just the other side. The camera wobble on his way past. Oh, did he? <laughs> it's Bob saying hello. <laughs> So the same here. It's easier with these um, nozzles that are thin to get the glue where you sort of want it. And thank you so much, Lynn Whitman, for the um, huge pack of applicators. They are, will be very, very useful. So I'm just checking I've got this the same way. I think it's that way. And it's the same thing. Make sure you've got the same amount Just take your time. It's worth taking your time. Because it's only going to annoy you if it's not right. So there we are. How pretty is that? It's just so pretty. That's how pretty. So pretty. I'll cut that off. And I've just got a little... Bit there to cut right and I've still got a little bit left that would go along the top of an envelope or something so that's excellent but I think that you can agree that that is right way up <laughs> that is a really really pretty tummy tuck so we're going to put it into our uh, journal oh wow look before we do that however you can see how nice that's going to look before we do that, I'm just going to use, uh, that's just not quite straight. Uh, so you've seen me do this before. Some of you new people may not have seen this. When you've used your die cutting machine and you've got your scraps left over, I save mine, <laughs> which comes as no shock to anybody. Uh, and I use them as stencils. So on a page like this, which is just a coffee stained page, and yes, it's going to have that nice tummy tuck down the middle, but you'll still see the paper at the edges. So what I'm going to do is just take this out of the journal, like so. And when you do that, the bits that you've got left inside, turn it like that, and then you will know where that page belongs to because believe me, you'll get lost. Where did it come from? Was it there? Was it there? And you drive yourself bonkers. So just do that and then you know when you go back to it where it belongs. People are saying that it's very attractive. Bobby is much better, thank you. Oh, that's you. That's me. No, I love that. <laughs> he is, he's loads better. And Kerry Roberts is beautiful. Rose Peels is beautiful. It's pretty, Bill isn't it? Is very pretty indeed. Uh, Louine Cooks is beautiful. Oh, do we know? I don't know Louine. Louine, hello. Thanks for joining us. Welcome along. Uh, I'm sure everybody will make you welcome. So this is getting a bit worn now, actually, because I've used it uh, quite a lot. And this section here is a bit wayward. But I'm just going to use the same ink that I've used uh, for, you know, everything. And just don't overload your applicator. You want this to be a sort of, as I keep saying, a whisper, just a whisper of colour in the background. And there's no sort of rhyme or reason to, oh, it's fallen out now completely. I'm going to have to cut another one. <laughs> um, there's no rhyme or reason why you're going to put them, just sort of fill up the background. But you just want it to have that cared for look. That's what you want, a cared for look. So I'm just going to do this one, which I think is um, lavender anyway, so it's very appropriate. I'm dying to have a look now on my porch prints and see the, that's perfect, I think, just a little, little whisper. What else have we got? Got that leaf that would go up there, I think. It's going to come off the page, but that's okay. Yeah, I'm dying to have a look at the ephemera kit for the shabby purple. Not that I don't like the ephemera kit I got, it's gorgeous. 
So I think that's probably sufficient for that side really. Um, and here we'll do that big daisy, which I like. It's one of my favourite actually. It's quite blousy, Pat. It's quite a blousy flower, but it's nice. So that's just how I go about making an interesting background. Um, I've lost my central section for that now. That's a bit of a shame. Daisy I've already got, so I have to use this leaf. I'll bring it in at a bit of an angle. But all these things, like this, they just say that you care. You cared enough to do this. And I like that. Um, I think that's probably sufficient. That's fine. Um, I've got this nice long one here. I could put that up there, couldn't I? I don't know if I've got enough ink. Try a bit more. Yeah, there we go. That's that's fine. Stop. Quit while you're ahead. And I can't remember. I think I might have inked around the around the page itself. Let's have a look. I think I did. Yeah, I inked around it. I haven't inked or done anything to the edges of the design sheets themselves. They don't need anything. I don't think so. I'm not doing anything to them. But this, be, particularly because it's lilac, I think, this colour, um, I'm putting it on the coffee stain paper just to tie it in. So I hope you're all busy journaling, busy doing things that you enjoy doing. It certainly eats hours away journaling and since Mr Fixit showed us how to do digital pages um, that eats hours away as well. So between Etsy, doing digital pages and actually journaling doesn't leave much time for anything else. <laughs> but what else is there I hear you ask? Well you know like housework or anything. Housework? Hmm. Yeah I'm a bit like that. What is housework? <laughs> I have mad blitzers, mad blitzers where everything gets tidied up, put away, whatever. Um, and then I feel that, yeah, I can sit and journal now and don't need to feel guilty about it. So that's that all the way around, inside and out. So it's time now to add our uh, tummy tuck here. Make sure you get it the right way up and it's going to go in the middle. So you see it was worth putting those um, flowers on. Doesn't that look nice now? Now I think uh, in order to get this really square, what I do is um, I put my ruler on and I think it's two and a quarter, but this lace is a bit thicker. So I'm just going to put it at two and an eighth there. And when I lie that up next to there, should have about two and an eighth left on the other side. No, I've got two. So I'm going to bring this out to, to two inches. So that my line of my line is down there and it's measuring two inches here. So when I put the glue on here, I can butt it up to that ruler there and I know it's going to be square because I have lost count of the times that I've put these on and they're just a fraction off. And once you know it's a fraction off, it drives you blinking mad. It drives me mad. So I'm going to leave that ruler there, that's square. And then I'm just going to put some glue. And he's just asking about your sponge. Who's what? Who? Hinny. Oh, asking about a sponge? Yeah. Oh. Just a makeup sponge, aren't they, basically? Can you grab those ones? Thank you. And do what with them? Well, show, show, show them. Well, do the one with the cameras. <gasps> okay. Could you remove that, please? Of course. Thank you. Yeah, they're just makeup sponges. Powder puff makeup sponges. That come from AliExpress. Or any 
chemist, pharmacy. Yeah. They all do them. Uh, and they're, they're great. I've got, I don't know, about 12 or something. So I've got one for each colour that I'm ever likely to use. And I try and keep them uh, with, the, you know, like this one I use for the lilac because it's a lilac coloured one. Just get that really square, square as you can along the bottom. And then just touching that edge of that ruler. Let's push that down along the top. And there we go. How pretty is that? It's fairly pretty, isn't it? Make sure that you haven't got your glue on your page underneath. Now then, I won't do this now because it's just boring. Um, but I will sew around the whole page. And I will sew over this. I'll be careful when I do it with my machine. Um, but I will sew over that. That's just a fraction too long there. A, f a fraction but I just thought it was actually it looked a little long so let's just square that up so I can't be doing with that it was just nothing 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 at all but it just looked not quite right yeah that's fine that's good. That lace is just so pretty. It's beautiful lace. Right, so what we'd like to put in there, what I'd like to put in there, as I say, I'm going to sew around it all so it'll, all, it'll be held doubly in place. And I know I don't like sewing this thick stuff with my machine, but I'll go s slowly and carefully with it. So what I would like to put into here is an envelope that we've made, or that we are going to make, somewhere on this desk is an envelope in pieces oh come on where did i put it mm -hmm. talk amongst yourselves did i put it in this one no it's not there okay well i don't know where it is so i shall move along I'll move on to the, I'll find it as I go through, I know I will. Um, so I'll leave that there and we'll move along to the music page. Now, the music page, I want to put some decoupage on. And you won't believe I've spent hours getting organised for this. <laughs> Uh, and this is the decoupage that I want to put on one of the um, signatures. I'm going to get an attack. Oh, I found my envelope. There we go. Um, so actually, I'll put it. I'll put it in this signature, seeing as this is the one we're working on today. But if you want to know how I did that, then there is a. You need your water today. Yes, as well? I do. Yeah, All thank right. you. Um, there is a YouTube video. Come on, get yourself gathered. There's a YouTube video on how to do this. It's an ordinary sheet of copier paper that you don't ordinarily use in your printer. And it's tissue paper, the sort that you'd wrap a gift up in. And the leading edge that goes through your printer has got masking tape on it to hold the tissue paper in place. And then you put it through your printer printing the image on that you want now we have a laser printer and we've done this on a laser printer we've tried it before on an inkjet printer and it didn't work because the um the glue when you put the glue on it just took the image away other people have told me subsequently that if you leave it for you know overnight or whatever then you can get away with an inkjet uh, thing other people as well have told me that if you spray it with hairspray it doesn't bleed out so try you know you're welcome to try any of those things i just i'm just not sure let's go back to this envelope anyway let's try and keep some semblance of, <laughs> of hope so this is a page from the book that i showed you yesterday which is this one a country herbal and it's it's got a lot of text in it. It's got some plates in it, but I love this text and I love the sort of images that you get of things that throughout the years and generations, 
people have used um, to heal themselves, make themselves feel better. So it's it's all plant related and it's in keeping with what we do. So I've taken a page from there. Um, that's one side with the plates on it and this side with just the text. And I prefer the text. So I've folded it there and I've folded it there. Now leave a gap here. If you don't leave a gap there, you can't get in to get anything out. So fold your page up and then this top bit, make sure that it's covering the bottom, but also that there's a gap there. Okay, so that's looking nice and square. So we want to, I'm afraid I am going to have to sew this, sorry. <laughs> Told Mr. To fix it not to put the sewing camera up because I wouldn't be sewing. Um, but I am going to sew, I'm sorry. Uh, so I'll only be a second. I'm just going to sew along the top for the moment. Oh, he's, he's off at the toot with his sewing camera. I wouldn't care. It's like, it's pretty untidy back there, let's say. So, well, it's not untidy. It's all junk journaling stuff. Piled high. Yeah, piled high. So I've, got, I've already chosen some things that I wanted to decorate it with. Um, so you'll see as we go along what they are. Right. So I'm just going to zigzag across the top here. You're not missing anything, guys. I'm literally, I'm zigzagging. I know, but it's better than staring at the wall. Yeah. That was quick. Well done. You're welcome. This is quite a nice wide book, so we're getting quite a nice big envelope, which is good. You always have to look at books in charity shops, you know, is it big, is it small? Very often more the size than actually what the subject of it. But um, you end up with a nice a nice book um, bookcase. So that's just zigzagged across there, just finished that off nicely. Uh, trim the ends off. I haven't reversed at the ends because ultimately I'm going to sew around the whole thing and the ends will get caught up in that. So what are we going to put on this? Well, in the ephemera pack was this, which I really like. I like that a lot. And you might remember yesterday I showed you the fabric that I bought for 50 pence a metre. I can't believe it. And I told you there was little purple um, flowers embroidered on it. So I thought that maybe that could go down there. It's really pretty. I like it a lot. Um, and along the top, maybe bring that down a little bit so we can see that. Yeah, just make sure we can see that when the top's folded in. This is just a scrap of, of uh, paper. It's just ripped off. But I just thought I could put it along there and put a little bit of that green that we've already got there. Um, perhaps use a bit of purple ribbon. Just build a cluster basically and the butterfly, that butterfly there. I think that's quite nice. I think that looks quite nice. What do you think guys? Yay, nay. Yeah, I think it's okay. I think that will do nicely. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ink round here and I thought this um, piece of ephemera that came in the kit as well would go nicely on the back. I like that. I think that's absolutely fine, perfect for that. So I'm going to ink around this. Just just quite lightly, really. As I say, I'm not convinced it's actually the right colour. Something more purple would would be better, but I haven't got it, so I'm not I'm gonna give up moaning about it. And that's gonna go there. Kind of off centre because I want this down there. I really love this fabric. I so love it. I mean, I love stripes. Everybody who knows me knows I love stripes. And this is stripy fabric with flower embroidery on it. It was made for me. 50 pence a metre. Blimey. That's ridiculous. 
it's just a question of being in the right place at the right time isn't it so i'm just going to stick that on there with a just a little bit of glue stick because i'm going to sew around it might as well make a good job of it if we're doing it at all there's not much glue left in that one but there'll be enough i think to hold this in place so i just want that line it up with the lines of text is probably the best idea so that yeah that's lovely that fits in nicely there so i'm just going to sew around that and all of these you need to do before you make your journal up don't forget because once it uh, your journal your envelope but you thought i'd really lost the plot there <gasps> When you're sewing with uh, onto paper, I find it better if you just don't go too quickly. Just take your time. It, it, it's beneficial anyway because you get it's more accurate. But you know, just take your time and don't ask too much of your machine because there is glue there, and it will be going onto the needle. So you don't want the needle to be all stuck up and you're trying to force it to go faster than it sort of wants to go. Do most of you sew in your journals or not? Let me know, I'd be really interested. I personally think it adds a whole finishing touch to the whole thing. Caught up on some again. I might I might just get away with it nearly at the end. I haven't got a whole lot of room here because I filled it up with stuff. Any available space, any flat surface is filled up with stuff. Just a little reverse stitch there just to lock it in. So yeah, I think that looks nicer being sewn in than just stuck down. off and let's have a look and oh, that looks nice just like that so this I'm not going to glue on because if you glue it on the glue has a habit of seeping up through the fabric and it makes horrible marks unsightly marks so I'm going to use my double-sided for that as much as I want to decorate this journal to death I am being mindful that it's going in a file folder and I don't want it to be too um, bulky. It's really easy to get carried away and make things bulky, but um, I want it to all fit in nicely. It, it will yaw a bit, but um, not too much of the alligator's mouth, hopefully. So I'm just going to put a bit in the middle of that as well. This would make beautiful um, French blinds for your window. <laughs> Can't help thinking that. Seeing as it was a curtain fabric shop, we bought it, bought this fabric in. So that's it. Just peel your double sided off, and you're ready to rock. So I'm just going to bring that in, drop it down right to the bottom there. Like that. There we are. Yeah, you alright? Yeah, Janet says she doesn't sew, but she does like it. Yeah. And Roz says she can't get the back tension right, as you will see in the page that she sent you. The back tension's all about the, the bobbin underneath. And um, there's a little screw on that bobbin, on the holder that holds the bobbin. It's a tiny little screw. 
and you can you can alter that you can make it tighter so it'll stop being so loopy but it does have a tendency if you're not careful of springing out completely and it's the teeniest tiniest little screw and you'll never find it so i would recommend if you're really having problems like that take it to um, a professional it, it, it doesn't really cost that much to have your machine serviced and then you've got it and you know that it's tip top uh, so you're not doing anything wrong or anything you know that it's right so I, I really would recommend that it's worth getting your, your machine serviced regularly so I'm just going to put a little bit of ink along here does everybody else saw or not uh, yeah Lynn's got a similar problem she can't get the tensions yeah right uh, she says they're very loose yeah. Uh, tension, it's just a nightmare. It yeah. really is, isn't it? It's the bottom tension that is the more difficult one to adjust. Yeah. Obviously, on most machines, you can adjust the top tension. But another important tip, of course, is to make sure you've got the foot lifted when you thread it. Yes. Because you need to open the tension disc. Yes. Yeah. If you thread it with your foot down, yeah. it won't go into the discs. Yeah. And you'll get no tension on the top. That's a really really important point um with this machine can you just click onto the thing this machine's up so if i was thread when i thread it and i come to the end um i need to make sure that this tension foot the the presser foot is up not down like that it's down like that when you're threading it you'll get your tension be all to pot make sure that your presser foot is up when you thread it definitely and seeing as I'm here I'll just show you what I'm talking about with this um, with this bobbin I'll bring it over here sorry so there's the bobbin and it's in what they call a bobbin race and there's the little screw that I'm talking about this one here uh, and usually with sewing machines you get a little sewing, uh, little screwdriver and you can alter that so if your tension is too loose I don't know if you can see that actually it's this one here that I'm talking about you can alter it and it's it's the same as everything else lefty loosey righty tighty um, so if your tension's too loose you need to go to the right to tighten it up a bit but we are talking millimeters here you know fractions, cut, of, fractions of millimeters just go steady you know a the weeniest bit at a time and a good tip that was taught to me when I was at school actually is get something like a fine sharpie or something like that and make a mark where it is at the moment so you can always at least get back to that so it, it's worth trying it's definitely worth trying um, let me just put this back in I've had my machine for years and years. It's quite an old machine now. And I really do know it inside out. I've done an awful lot of sewing with it. Um, but even I, you know, when it comes to altering that bottom tension, I think, ooh. Leave it up to me. <laughs> yeah, leave it up to us to <laughs> fix it. How's it always to fix it? As a general rule, if you pull the thread out of that, case yes that's true and, and hang it that, that's true i should have done that yeah so there it is so i'm holding this like that and if i just joggle it it just comes down just not and, that, and that's kind of a rough ballpark for getting your tension yeah. right see there it's not it's not really moving at all i've got to really help it on its way to come if you're come jiggling, down. it just starts to move that's it's about pretty right. much about right. Yeah. So you can alter that screw and subsequently that spring that holds that thread in place um, until, you've, until you've got that. That's what you're aiming for. So welcome to our video <laughs> about fixing your sewing machine. Your top tension. Yeah, make sure that you thread it with your presser foot up. That is essential. 
and um, it mine mine doesn't. It's it's um, an electronic one, but very often they have dials on them, and they'll have sort of black three, four, five. That really is where you should be. You shouldn't be up in two and one, or you shouldn't be down at seven or eight, unless you're doing something specific. Um, but for ordinary sewing, you should be in that middle section. Right, I'm going to stick this on. Blimey, we're not getting anywhere today. Next door seems to have decided to cut the grass. The accompaniment of a strimmer. And the only other thing I'd say about the sewing machines is cleanliness is next to godliness. Yes. If you open up that bobbin race and it looks like a massacre in a sheep factory. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's time to get it cleaned out. And don't blow it. Don't just blow the dust out. Because what you do is you blow it further into the mechanism. I found that out to my cost. A good thing to use is an old paintbrush that's gone really fluffy. Or maybe one of them makeup brushes that you can just poke in and it just yeah. tracks it to them. I use... This is the one that came with my sewing machine in the first place. And you can see, I mean, it needs a good clean. But that's what I use. It's kind of fluffy thing and it just it gets in and gets all the dust out. So anyway, there we go. That's going there. I think that's going along there. Let's just check this out once again. And that's going along there with the butterfly there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, let's do that. Once again, I'm not adding glue to this. I know it's only a very small piece, but if there's glue coming through, it's going to look horrible and it's going to spoil your whole envelope and you'll hate it. So just add a little bit of double sided to that. And we don't have that problem. This fabric is very man-made. It's very nylon-y. And I, I know that it really, really would show up. The glue would just show up through it like mad. So I'm not taking that risk. Let's press that down a bit more. That's it. So I want that just off the edge of there and just up a little bit from just there is where I want mine. And I want this sort of in the middle of there, like that. So I don't want that. And I don't want a pointy end. Um, but I do want some double sided on it. Same reason. says she always has a problem with the glue showing through even when she uses Fabri-Tac. Yeah, you will. You absolutely will. It's uh, the wet glues, you know, even Fabri-Tac is a wet glue uh, and, it, and it'll show, it will show through. So the only thing I can find to use instead is double-sided tape, which is why I'm using this. It just... Uh, it just gets sucked into the fabric and Fabri-Tac is brilliant at sticking fabric and fibres down. That's kind of its job. But it does also show if you're not careful. Well, even if you are careful, it'll show. Some people do um, put it down, put the Fabri-Tac down, then take their finger and spread it out really, really thinly, then put the fabric on, and I think that works. Um you know, I think that works. You have got very little glue in touch with the fabric, but I find double sided just works fine. It's um, because it's particularly problematic with a satin ribbon because it sort of loses the sheen, doesn't it? So, yeah, it so does. you see it more. It's horrible, it goes like dark blotches on it. It's horrible because the fabric act goes clear, but it still altered the yeah. sheen of the satin. Yeah, it's not nice. So, yeah, double-sided, I think, is... Well, double-sided is my solution. But as I say, some people do put it on, spread it out with the finger, 
I'm just going around this because I could just see the white edges where I'd cut, which I didn't like. So I'm going to stick that down. Um, I've got a fabric tuck here, so I'll use that. I'm just going to stick the middle and a little way up the edge. Up the sides, I mean the leaves. Wings. Wings, woman. Put that on there. Like that. You can just fold it up a little bit. It'll squash down, obviously, in the in the book, but if you give it a start in life like that. I mean, that's exaggerated. I wouldn't want it to stay like that, but um, just for a start. And I'm going to stick some gems on. Jen? <laughs> Jen and I have been hatching a plan. Yeah, these are my new ones. Look at those. <laughs> I'm not getting too many out. Yeah, these are my new ones. Look at these. They've all landed the wrong way around. There we are. Look at those. Can you see them? <laughs> zoom in, shall we? A zoom in moment. I oh think. my goodness, he's zooming in. They are supremely sparkly. Supremely sparkly. So anyway, after all that, is that the size that I actually want? Should I just put one in there? I, th I think one is <laughs> sufficient. I really kind of need my sunglasses on actually at this stage. One is fine. That's what it's getting. Uh, and for the people in the UK who like these, I like sparkle. These are called Preciosa. Um, and we get ours from the Rhinestone Queen. Uh, and she is quick. Her delivery is fantastic. Uh, really, really speedy delivery, which is brilliant. Because... You know, once you order something, you do not want to be waiting for it, do you? So, yeah, Rhinestone Queen. A little bit of E6000 on there. Quickly shut that lid up. And we'll put this right there in the middle of our butterfly. And that will stick nicely. Since Jen joined us... Jen Murphy, uh, Jen Sinclair, sorry. Then everything's got bling on it. <laughs> I'm not so sure I used to always have bling on everything, Jen, but since you came along, everything that can have bling does have bling. So there we are. That's the top of our envelope. I quite like that. Excuse me. And so there's just the back left to do which is this uh, and I probably will sew that on as well because I, I, I like I like them sewn on you could if you wanted make that into a pocket but I think we've got plenty going on as it is let's just ink around that do I want to no I don't really I quite like that brown so I'll leave that just put a little bit of um, glue stick on it just to give me a chance when I'm sewing it I think about there. He's still in a bit. In a bit too far, I think. Need to bring that over Whoa, a bit. We too far now. Got top of your head. Uh, Something like that is about. That's right. about exactly the same as the uh, text down each side, which it doesn't mean anything. It's just a curiosity. I'm just struggling getting this exactly square. That's it, I think, there. Yeah, okay. So I'm just going to sew around that. I'm going to zigzag around it. Oh, I've got to put my sewing machine back together again. Oh, dear. Right. 
So hold your, your threads when you first start stitching or they'll get tangled up underneath and start to look, um, show on the front and look nasty. So you see, even in this one little envelope that we're doing, the stitching and... Oh, oh that's better. So just taking my time getting it right. So I'll do one that's quite similar to this for the other signature. But you know, you've watched me do this one, you've you've got the the hand of it. Um, you can go off on your own, I'm quite sure, and do uh, an envelope. You know how to do it now. This is quite sticky. I can feel the needle being sticky. So there we go. That's lovely. You know, once you know what type of sewing machine you've got. I've got a Faf. Um, it's called a Faf Performance Twenty Fifty Eight. They don't make that model anymore. The one that's comparable is the, oh, what do you call it again? Performance 5, is it? Performance 7, is it? Something like that. Um, it did cost a lot of money uh, when it was new. But, you know, I've looked after it. I really have looked after it. And it's paying dividends now. So there's our, that's the front of our envelope. That's the back. How nice is this? This is lovely. I love it. So now I've got to uh, sew around it so, so it actually becomes an envelope. Because as it is at the moment, it's just a, <laughs> a very pretty piece of paper. So I'm going to go back to straight stitch and uh, just sew around it with straight stitch. Actually, I was going to go, I'll show you now. I was going to go from there, right round it, back up and back down to here. But I don't really want to sew along there. And I don't want to sew along there. It's not going to look right. So despite the fact that I have started here, um, I'll show you now what I'm going to do. Right, I'm now going to start from here, go up this side, along here, missing out my butterfly, which I'm going to have to bend over for the purposes of. Do I want sewing on that? Oh, no, I'm just going to do the edges, I'm just going to do it up to there, up to the bottom of the pocket. So I'm just going to sew down there. That's it. That's all I'm going to sew. So it might be worth having a good think about yours. Um, you know, when you, when, when you start off to sew. Oh, yeah, 
Right, that's definitely adequate amount of sewing for one, for one envelope. So let me show you what I do to the stitches on the back. Uh, those of you that are always around me know what I do. But the front stitching is always much, much neater than the stitching that you get on the back. So if you take your bone folder and just push that down, push your oh, stitches... Mr. Fixer is thinking about something else. Well, it's knees down for the rugby. Oh. <laughs> uh, and push your stitches down like that into the paper. Then they'll never be as pretty as the front, but they won't stand out as being uh, quite so ugly as they they were. So our oh, butterfly now has got all bent wings. Um, so there we are. That's that's that. And really, you just need to pop something into there, a little journaling card or some such thing. And then it's going to go under there, like so, and be held on. Well, it'll hold itself on, but to hold this down, a paper clip is probably the ideal solution. And I have just the job. <laughs> oh, I know you're sick of seeing it, but I'm not. <laughs> Can you imagine using that? This is a gift sent to me from Flo. And, oh, I love it. But anyway, I'm going to use a paper clip that's a tad more sensible than that. <laughs> I have got some pink ones, some pinkish, largish ones. They might be a bit too large. I don't know. What shall I use? Shall I use green? I don't even know I had this bag of paper clips. But it's quite useful because it, there's lots of colours and it's the little baby ones. It's nice. So that's going to go into there. It's just going to be paper clipped on like that so it's 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 not going to go anywhere it's pretty solid so yeah that was a lot of fussing around but we have made the tummy tuck we have made the envelope you just need to get a journaling card and put the journaling card in there so people aren't disappointed when they open the envelope and go yeah, nothing in there so for our next trick like i say i'm going to sew around all of that um so this is the other side of the coffee stained paper and what we've got for this is um, our envelopes <laughs> so there's one oops things are flying out and let me show you what I have in mind for it. That's the one, the one that I tell you I bought from uh, my porch prints in with a folio kit. And I've just uh, kept it and I've used it. It was A4 size, uh, in all honesty. I've blown it up to, I've just asked it to print A3 size. And I've used that as a template for this, which I also printed out on my A3 printer, but you can do it adequately on your... A4. Uh, so I've now got two of these from one for each signature in my journal. So um, this is how it goes. Just need some glue down here. Let's just check. Yeah. So I'm just going to put some glue down this flap along the bottom edge there. Same down here. Like so, put my pin back in. And that will just glue itself nice and closed. I uh, just wanted to cut the sharp corner off the end of that. Let's round that corner off. It, I'm not inking round here because this is how it came. You know, it was always meant to be an envelope. And so it's got this nice sort of inky look to it anyway. So it doesn't need inking. I'm not going to ink it. Uh, what I have done, however, is cut out a pocket. And I've used, uh, again, some uh, card that came from the paper mill. And I've cut out a, a section that is five and a half inches by five and a half inches. So just using my small one here, 
I'll just cut straight up at five and a half is the easiest thing to do. Five and a half there. And with quilting rulers, it's really easy. You square it up along the bottom, square it up along the side, and you really can't, you can't go wrong. It's got to be straight. So cut that there. And then five and a half the other way. There we are. And then I just cut off a corner. So I'm just going to use the existing one as a template and just draw a line there. Um, but what I did was just mark a spot there that was, I think it was um two and a half inches in fact it is two and a half inches two and a half inches there and drew a connecting line so i've just knocked the corner if you like off my um square that's all i've done and i didn't want to take too much off because i've done that before you've watched me do that before when things wouldn't actually stay in the pocket because i'd taken too much off it so now i just need to score along the bottom and the side here and I need to score at that fabrics really irritating me this is um, this is called a scoring rotary cutter the fact that it's called a cutter is uh, is not true it's it scores the blade in it won't cut it, it's not designed for cutting it's designed for scoring and I've had some problems of late with my scoreboard because I can't line things up properly. I can't see where the line at the top joins the line at the bottom. And so I, I find this more accurate, is what I'm saying to you. The old is exactly the same as the others. Yes. You just buy the different blades. Yeah. It's a different design, but it's... Yeah, it could be. It could be in this one. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. The blades um, will go in whatever cutter you've got. This is my cutter cutter that cuts. And this is my scoring, which we've written scoring on it. Um, and I have, I definitely have picked this one up when I thought I was scoring and I've cut things off. So be careful that you don't end up chopping stuff off that you thought you were scoring. But it is accurate and I'll, I prefer it. I really prefer it to the scoreboard. So I want this at half an inch. So I'm just holding my ruler down and I'm just scoring along there. And this is thick card and it's doing the job rather and nicely. It's called the square thing you're using for measuring. This is called a quilting ruler. Uh, and they come in all sorts of shapes and sizes. Uh, I've got several. There's kind of a family of them, if you like. This is 15 inches square. This one's nine and a half. This one's six and a half. You can also get sort of rectangular ones. This one's 12 and a half by six and a half. Um, and I have, I had them because I, I do quilting, uh, and I used to do quilting all the time. That was, you know, like a junk journal. Now I used to quilt all the time, um, and so I had quilting rulers. And it was only when I started junk journaling, and I realised I was, I was finding it difficult to get really, really accurate measurements, and cut accurately, and we came up with the idea of using the the quilting rulers and the rotary cutter and you get an accurate cut every time that they're, they're just to me for me they're easier so there we are we've scored that down there and then i'm just going to cut this uh, corner now there's the intersection of where the score lines so i want to go into that intersection but I want to just go in a shallower than 90 degree angle right into it and turn my scissors round and come out there. So that's the sort of shape I want, like that. Right into the corner. Okay. So then we'll just fold these along the score line. Take your bone folder. Press that down. And... There will be 
here where you folded it over you you will from the top be able to see that and we don't want that so we're just going to take that little shape off up to where it bends like that ross says her husband surprised her yesterday with an amazon parcel that had two quilting rulers in it what a nice guy isn't that lovely, lovely. oh well done so all your work from now on is going to be ultra accurate they do take yeah you know, i think you know, probably take a little while to get used to them because uh, it's hard to explain really but each line has a thickness if you know what i mean so it i can't really explain this to you but you need to be either at the top of the line or the bottom of the line don't be at the top of the line on one end and the bottom of the line on the other otherwise you'll get a bit of an angle on it so make sure that your line is really on the same place along your paper So there we are, that's our little corner pocket. And I've cut two templates, uh, well they're not templates, I've cut them out of paper that I'm gonna stick, I've sewn around and I'm gonna stick on there and that will be our corner pockets. I've got two obviously, because I've got two uh, two corners. So the same, same colors, just slightly different uh, paper that I've used. So I'll stick one of those onto there. I'm really liking this thing that I'm doing at the minute of using solid colours behind the design paper. Um, I can't remember when I came up with it, but I really like it. It just adds it, um, I don't know, it just looks a bit more finished to me. It is, yeah, it's another degree of flapping around. But, you know, what else would we be doing, eh? When you're making the journals with very similar colours, they can start to blend into yeah and just, you can't really see where what's a pocket what's a yeah exactly tuck spot yeah you're right so at least with this you can it has got a border around it you can see what's what so i'll just try and get that square as you can is that square i think that's pretty square and do the same for the other one obviously i'm not showing you that one because there's no need to they're both exactly the same and if you've sewn around it take your bone folder and just press that bit down from the from where you've sewn to the edge because for some reason that bit never wants to stick i don't think you get the same pressure on it so just make sure you've got it stuck down like that that's fine there we go right so let's put the pin in the top of that i will want it again in a sec but never mind um so oh God, this is ridiculous so i'm gonna put the this is our piece this is the back of the tummy tuck piece okay doesn't that look nice um and I don't want this right down here in the corner. I want it kind of up a bit in the page. So that's going to go in there. So let's just see where that's going to look nice. About there, I would say. Maybe even further across there. That's our centre line there. So let's just remove that a bit. And do that same trick that we did before with the ruler and I'm just gonna line that center up there at an at an inch and see if that's so the center is there underneath that inch on my ruler and let's just see if that's right if that's where I want it yeah I think that's fine I'm going to go for that so I'll try and leave that as it is and then I'll stick these two sides down I'm going to use fabric tack because this is quite firm card and I want a good firm glue so 
So because it's because the envelope has thickness, that's why we've put these gussets on the on the pocket. Um, if it was just a piece of paper or something, you wouldn't need the, the gusset. But this allows for a bit of thickness in the pocket. That's right. So let's just let's just come to there. I think. Let's just try that really quickly. Make sure. Yeah, that's fine. And we're square there, we know we are, so we can push that down. Like so. There we go. And this is our uh, pocket here. I'm going to go in there like that. And that looks nice, I like that doesn't look like it's hidden away in the corner of the page. I didn't want that. Um, I'm just going to remove that until the fabric tuck's dry because I don't want this to stick to the fabric tuck. And with my look, it probably would. And I just want to decorate uh, this pocket just a little bit. And so all I've, all I've brought are uh, two of these little die cuts that I've got. Put one up there, one a little bit lower down. And a little bow in the corner and that's pretty much going to be it I think I think that one probably wants to go there really and then this one like that with the bow in the corner and I think that I think that's fine you can go to town on this if you want to of course you can it's your blinking thing and do what you want um, but I, I think that's sufficient similarly with the envelope itself you can really decorate it any way you wish it's the beauty of journals you know I'm quite sure that two people could start out with exactly the same stuff and you'd end up with two very very different journals fortunately we're all different and that's what makes it interesting. We have a, a sister group on Facebook, a sister group to this uh, channel, and it's called Miss Paint a Lot's Junk Journal Group. And on that, we very often see uh, what people are working on, and it's fantastic. I love it. I love to see what people are working on and what they've done and, and etc. Uh, so if you'd like to pop on over there if you're not already a member miss paint a lot's junk journal group pop over join up uh, you don't have to join in if you don't want to you can lurk if you if you're happier lurking but we're a nice group we're a kind group um how do we assist upon it yeah that is the rule <laughs> if you're not going to be kind don't join uh, and if you're not kind you won't you won't last very long we're a lovely group of people I'm so fortunate to have all of all of the members are lovely and you know they do often share their work at first nobody really was sharing I think people were um you know a lot of, a lot of newcomers to the the sport I nearly said <laughs> the sport of jug journaling <laughs> yeah. Yeah. can be a blood sport on occasion <laughs> the sport <laughs> I can't get my clue on for laughing. <laughs> the sport of junk journaling, yeah. yeah. It's a bit like cage fighting on occasion. <laughs> it's a bit like rugby. Oh my goodness. What is it? Craft. It's a craft <laughs> <laughs> of junk journaling. Um, I don't even know what I was talking about, so there you go. <laughs> talking rubbish, as per normal. We're talking about our group. Yeah, our group. What about it? Playing I, sport? I, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're not. We're not a sporting group <laughs> at all. <laughs> oh dear, I made myself laugh now. <laughs> right. I'd say it was anything. We're probably more akin to sumo. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. So I'm just going to pop this little um, bow. I'm carrying on regardless here, guys. I'm just carrying on, okay? Uh, I'm going to put Fabri-Tac on the back of that because, and quite a bit of it. 
um, there's no way it will come through all those layers. So she hopefully. So I'm just going to hold that in place just for a sec. Uh, Fabri-Tac doesn't take too long to dry, but um, it does take a time to dry. So I'll just hold it in place. Until then, I'll have a mouthful of coffee. How's everybody doing? Uh, thank you. I've joined the group and we'll share. Oh, that's Hino. Great. Love to see what you're doing. Love to see it. Hilda's commenting. Well done, Hilda. Thanks for keeping the home fires burning. Nathania looks happy there. She's laughing away. Yeah, I think Donna means by the that that it showcases the pretty papers and it does, yeah. Mm. Right, there we go then. That's glued on. The, if that's dry, then the inside bit must be dry. So I'm just going to put that in. Nancy joined us earlier. I missed that. Oh, Nancy. Hello. Good morning, afternoon. It's copy time. Sorry she's late. Hello. Uh, well, then you would miss me saying thank you to you. Um, I, I did a sort of bit of a roll call earlier on about people to whom we are as a group and a channel, myself personally, are very grateful to. And you, Nancy, of course, are on that roll call. Um, Nancy is very generous and kind and giving and without, I said it earlier, but for those of you who weren't here, without people, I don't know where my bit of paper's gone, but I did a, I did a list, but it's not, it wasn't by all, you know, it wasn't everybody who's given to the channel. Um, it's on an envelope, cream envelope. It's not an exhaustive list. Yeah, here we are. I'll just go through it again, but I mean, for example, Miranda Holmes should be on this list and isn't. There's lots of people um, that should be on the list and aren't. This was just a quick. So there's Roz. Uh, these are people that were saying thank you to. Roz, Donna, Hilda, Lynn Whitman, Lynn Morris, Lajean, Shaz, Deborah, Jen, Desiree, Nancy, and like I say, I, I know Miranda should be on there and there's others too. So please don't be offended if I haven't listed you out today. Um, you will you will get your day in the sun. I'm so grateful to you all. It's, it's, it's just an impossibility without it. So, um, you know, thank you very, very much. Right, before I go, I am going to put the decoupage on this piece of music. Where are we up to? Oh my goodness, we're in an hour and a half nearly. Well, that's just the way it goes. So, right, I showed you how we dec how we'd printed that on uh, tissue paper. And the problem that I now have is that the tissue paper is white, music paper is that worn creamy colour. And if I just decoupage that on like that, it's just going to look, yeah, not so good. So I'm just going to prepare myself with some, <laughs> some cling film. Or booby wrap as we call it. <laughs> so I'll just get myself some of that so I'm ready. It's ready to use. There we are. Put it on the storage shelf. Put it on the storage there shelf. There we go. <laughs> 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 yeah that's where it is yeah so i've got this you've seen me use it before this uh tim holtz distress collage medium in vintage he also does um an ordinary one that's not vintage and that's see you know clear see-through transparent stuff of course so i'm just sort of taking note of where this is it comes right to the top and goes right to the bottom and it's about to there so um i'm just going to put the glue on Oh no, it's come off my storage shelf. Put this glue on um, where, we, where we're going to stick our decoupage. Doesn't matter if you go over where, where you're going to put it, because we're going to go over the whole thing anyway. And just pop it down like so. And because we're using the vintage sort of brings it all together much better than just uh, transparent it's one of my favorite things this actually this um, collage 
collage medium. I really like it. See, look at that. I can lift it up again. And loads of glues, including Mod Podge, you can't do that. Um, so this just makes dec it makes decoupage easy. <laughs> oh dear, I should be doing an advert. So I'm just kind of going over it again, making sure that it's stuck down nicely. I don't think I actually need my uh, cling film. I think that's done all right. And I'm going to go over the whole page with this so that it's all the one colour. Just to unify it. It, it dries um, really well. It's not at all tacky or sticky like some of the glues that you get uh, for decoupage. So you can do that. Now you might remember one of the times I was using this, I was trying to use Distress Ink over it to put st a stencil on. Well, we have subsequently discovered, in fact, we discovered later that day, that you can't get Distress Ink to go over this. It just will not work. However, Distress Oxide does. So if you want to put stencils on or anything over the top of this collage medium, Distress Oxide is the way to go. All right. And if you'd have watched my video, you'd know that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, no, we didn't. We didn't use this, did we? No. No, it's it's obviously perceives it as darker than it is. I don't know about that. All I know is that um, you can't get ink to stay on there and you can get Distress Oxide to dry on it. So there we go. That's that. That will dry away to its heart's content. I'll do the other, the one in the other signature the same. I'm not going to sew around it um, because the paper's too fragile. What would happen is it would become like a, post, a page of postage stamps and you'd be able to tear it off. So I'm not going to... Um, uh, Lynn would just want to check again what that product is that you're using. It's this. Uh, and Nathaniel would like to know if you can write on it when it's dry. It's Distress Collage Medium Vintage, Tim Holtz. Um, you can also get the clear. And you can also get one that's called Crackle. Please don't if you want to crackle. I have tried it every which way up to get it to crackle and it won't. It absolutely won't. These are the two other ones. This is the Distress Collage Medium Matte, and that's the one that dries clear. Um, and this is the one that says crazing. Yeah, it's making me crazy. I have tried it thick, I've tried it thin, I've tried to heat dry it, I've tried to let it dry by itself. I've tried everything I can possibly think of, and I can't get this to craze excuse me at all so i'm just telling you how, how what i find as for writing on it afterwards i don't think i've got anything lying around have i that i've done um give us a minute nathaniel we'll see i'll just put some on a bit of a bit of paper and we'll see uh when it dries if you can write on it we'll do an experiment I mean, it may depend on the type of pen, of course. Poscas will work. I bet your Poscas, Poscas work. would work. Sharpies would definitely work. Well, you say that. Ballpoint pen, maybe not. Yeah. Right, so I'll just put a bit of this on this envelope. We'll let it dry. Do you want to go in and dry it? Yeah, if you would, that would be excellent. Thank you. Uh, and we shall conduct this experiment. <laughs> I like experiments. Right, so what I also want to do with this music page is, is strengthen it. That collage medium itself will strengthen it a little bit, but not enough. Uh, not enough for us to handle. So what, I, what I'm going to do is use some papers that I've printed out. Um, they're just the same, it, it's the same set. I've just printed them out on A4 size. And I'm just going to use, tear some bits off and, and use them down the side, really. Um, that's the wrong way. That's the way. 
So I'm just really just tearing it off. And I'm just going to attach them like a collage just down the side. I hate it when that happens, when you get the white bit of the paper showing through. Now I've ripped up too small, so I'll take it off altogether. So I'll put that one down there and I could have probably done with like a white ah there's one that's a bit whiter tear a bit down there so it is literally just a, a a collage of um, of paper just to strengthen that edge and look pretty go down there and that can go behind it perhaps like so that's all the way down to the bottom there then you might want to put something a bit darker if you had something a bit darker. Are you conducting an experiment? Well, no, <laughs> I'm getting things for you. To oh, hang on. Let, let me just stick these that. down. Yeah, let's get, just get too, too much of a tangle. So I'm just going to use a little bit of this from just to go in behind. don't want that there because I've torn it the wrong way and I've got a white edge. Right, so if I put that bit down there, that bit down there, that bit down there, I think that looks quite nice. It's quite casual, shall we say, for me. But I, I like it, so that's fine. So we'll stick that down there. I'll use glue. There's still a bit of tack from that collage medium, but I'll just use glue. And I'm not inking it. And doing this to one side is sufficient. You don't need to do this to both sides, but you will need to do it to the other side of the paper in your book, in your journal, in your signature even. Yeah, really wants to know if you're going to do that on both sides or just the one. Well, that's. I'm not doing it on the. on the other side of this, on, on here, but I will have to do it on, you know, as it's, as it's in the, the journal like that. I'll have to do it to this side, either on this side or the other side, because this is obviously only strengthening this. But it will be strong enough that I don't need to do it to the. to here. No, you can if you want to. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, of course you can. And, or you could make it much more formal. Like I say, I, I, I would describe this as a casual arrangement. <laughs> <laughs> like us. <laughs> yeah. Um, you could make it much more formal by putting lace down it, sticking lace on, sticking ribbon on, um, you know, make it more more of the, what I normally do, to be honest. But I just quite like this. A little bit there at the top needs cutting off. And that I was going to put under there, wasn't I? Oh well, I have to go over the top now. Yeah, that's fine. I think I've got three papers here that are a bit similar in colour, to be honest. They'd be better if they were uh, slightly different. And I'll go in search of something for, for the other signature that shows it off a bit better. Just overlap that a little bit, make sure it's straight. That's that's why it's a good thing to use the edge of your paper um, when you're tearing it out, because then you've got a very straight edge like that. You can get straight down the edge of your music sheet. There we go. I think that looks quite nice. Put my pin back in my glue. Right. 
just uh, tidy up those little bits that are sticking out and this one here on the bottom too so there we are so that's our decoupage on our music sheet it's not quite dry yet uh, and this as I say casual arrangement of papers which will strengthen this edge here and allow us to turn it over without worrying that we're going to tear the, the sheet itself so that looks quite nice I think so let's conduct this experiment for Nathania well for all of us it's interesting to know what would you like first ballpoint pen yeah ballpoint pen that seems to work very well it's not rubbing off Sharpie. Sharpie. self portrait that works well it doesn't rub off Oscar. Oscar. that feels a bit more yeah I'll, I'll leave it to dry but it does feel like it's not sinking in I'll just leave it to dry though pencil it's a 4B it's quite soft It, yeah, I'd expect that from a 4B anyway, there's a lot of graphite in it, so. And Frixian. Is this a proper Frixian? Yeah. Which has its own beauty, of course, as we know. So, let me just get my dry, make sure everything's dry. Did you see that little trick there? Did you see it? Look at this Frixian. I shall write just in here. Watch the Frixian when you apply heat. It's magic. I tell you, it's magic. These pens are called Frixian. F-R-I-X-I-O-N. By a company called Pilot. And they're disappearing pens. I, I discovered them when I was quilting because you can mark your quilting line on, follow it with the sewing machine, run an iron over it and it absolutely disappears. Um, but, you know, they have the beauty now oh for God. marking things. Um, it just disappears. So, and everything else. Yeah, that Posca, once it's dried, is fine. Sharpie's fine. The pencil's fine. The biro. Yeah. I think you could say that you can write on that, Nathania. There's none of those medium there that, the media there that's hicking at all. Um, so, yeah, that's the Frixian pens. Really interesting things. Right, well, I think I've bored you long enough today. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think we've come to the end of today's session. I really hope you've enjoyed it. I mean, it's um hasn't been the most funnest time we've ever had, but we've, we've actually somehow today we managed to get some journaling done, which is quite remarkable for us because normally we just chat and laugh. <laughs> um, but I quite like that. Um, let's just have a look and see where we're at, what we've done. goes in there doesn't it that's just not quite dry yet so I'm not going to leave it in after the live because I'll come back and it'll be stuck to it so where are we what have we done I don't know where the outside signature page has gone it's gone on the missing list however this was the inside bit that we did and we did this tummy tuck and we did this gorgeous envelope which I really 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 like have to be careful with that lace so that's the envelope front and back it's nice that I like it and it fits it and we did these uh, ghostly sort of flowers beautiful lace that hilda gave me which is gorgeous i lost my paper clip here we are 
You're right. Yep. We were talking today about uh, tea bag paper. I don't know whether you've come across tea bag paper. No. It's a sort of paper they make tea bags out of. Yeah. When you can get them, they're called like filter papers. Oh yeah. Reusable tea bag papers or whatever. But apparently they're very good for stamping on and printing on and that sort of thing. Have to investigate that situation. Because they're more water resistant because obviously they're meant to go in up uh, tea. Yeah, yeah. So they're more, you know, yeah. resistant to water damage as it were. We'll have to investigate that then. Absolutely. Definitely. Um, and there's the envelope, uh, the corner that we put in. We just decorated it just a little bit. I might go slightly more to town with the other signature. Uh, and this envelope, which is waiting for um, a journaling card or some little booklet or something to go in there. It's a bit naked as it is. Uh, the music paper, which we decoupaged onto using the Tim Holtz uh, Distress Medium Collage in Vintage. Uh, and we've just put this little bit of... Uh, collage down the side here and that's as far as we've got today guys Jean says it's called quilting paper over there the tea bag paper all oh, right it's also called quilting paper oh right okay so we live and learn and Jean's reminded everybody to like the video because we always forget to ask Jean to you're so good thank you very and much Lynn's so. usually yeah. on the ball with that please 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 if you're watching this and you haven't subscribed to the channel please do so uh, we have a sister group called Miss Painterlot's Junk Journal Group. Miss Painterlot's Junk Journal Group on Facebook. Please join. You're very welcome. We're a nice bunch of folk. Um, that's really all I can tell you. I'll be back midweek, probably Wednesday, where we'll be continuing with this. You can see where I've got up to. I'll get the other, other signature up to this stage. That's what I'll do. Um, with a decoupage in the pocket and the blah 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 so we'll see where where we're up to then i'll create an event for it so you'll be able to see when i'm coming on and you won't miss miss it but if you do you, you know you watch it back at your convenience thank you very very much to everybody who's joined in today you are stars <laughs> you really are big juicy stars thank you all and i'll see you on wednesday Bye. bye